my problem is that they're saying that the investigation is is closed. What investigation? They never started an investigation. The best that I can be. It took us three days for them to even tell us where her body was located at. We had to keep begging them and calling them to ask them, can you just please tell me where my babe, where my child's are? In December 2021, Lauren Smith Fields and Brenda Lee Rawls died on the same day in the same Connecticut neighborhood. Since then, they say no one from the Bridgeport Police Department has given their families any update on the investigations into their deaths. They want to figure out why. Like, I'm really about to be 25 in two years, like. 23-year-old Lauren Smith Fields died on December 12, 2021, after going on a Bumble date with a 37-year-old. Her mother says Bridgeport police never notified them and only found out after physically showing up to her daughter's apartment, where she found a note stuck on the door with a number to call. It belonged to a Bridgeport police detective. Smithfield's family was not happy with their conversation with that detective. He told us to stop calling his phone, that the guy that night was a good guy, leave it alone, just to stop calling his phone, talking just talking disrespectful, it was crazy. The medical examiner ruled Fields' cause of death accidental, saying she had several drugs in her system, including fentanyl. I spoke with Bridgeport to new police chief Roderick Porter and asked who the Bumble date called when he first discovered Lauren's body. From my, my review of the records, he called 911. Okay. If the records indicate that everything was on the up and up and this person, this Bumble date, did call and did you know, call 911 immediately. And if the officer responded in an up and up way, then why had it taken so long for that to come out? Yeah, so I, I can't speak to that. Um, you know, I became the chief December 1st. And one of the things that I promised to do was be as transparent and honest as we can. And that's what we're trying to do at this point. So I can't really speak to all of that, but just looking at what I looked at, um, I don't know why there would have been a delay in sharing information with the family. I mean, I, I know that you weren't chief, you know, at that point, but did you know, were you a part of the department at that time? Did you hear anything? Were you made aware, privy to anything that might have indicated why? Um, I was a part of the department at that time. Um, it was before I had left. And uh, um, no, I wasn't privy to uh, what had occurred. Her Bumble date was not charged, and Porter says he was never named as a suspect. Brenda Lee Rawls also died that same day after a visit with a neighbor her sister Dorothy says was someone she used to date. Once her family stopped hearing from her, they went looking. Dorothy says her siblings found out their little sister was dead from that neighbor, who then handed them her clothes. But Rawls' body was not at his house. It was at the medical examiner's office. The ME ruled Rawls died of natural causes, heart disease triggered by diabetes. She was 53. Her family was outraged by how authorities handled her death. The case was never about if she had illness or not. The case is specifically about the fact how they treated my sister like a Jane Doe in death, how they violated her civil rights, how they violated the family's civil rights without even not notifying us. And, and we wanna know what happened that night. Who came to get her? What police officer was, was there? Did, was she taken by a, uh, an ambulance or what? Why didn't they question the guy that was there? Why wasn't there tape around? You find somebody dead in your bed in the morning. Who did he call? What about the 911 tapes? How was it possible that the man, the neighbor who, who was friends with your sister, how come he was not questioned? If Do you think he was the last person to see your sister alive? Absolutely. First things first, I don't believe there ever was an investigation. In neither case did Bridgeport police contact either family to notify them of the women's deaths. Both families tell Inside Edition Digital they're gutted. They still don't know the manner in which Lauren Smithfield and Brenda Lee Rawls died, since they question the accuracy of the medical examiner's reports. They say their repeated requests for 911 recordings, police body cam footage, even the women's personal belongings, including Lauren's cell phone, anything that would give these families insight into the women's last moments have yielded no response. They didn't take that guy's phone that night. They didn't search through nothing. We still haven't got any feedback on what they found on Lauren's phone. We still haven't got her ID back. Any of the items that was that the police took from her that night when she passed, I mean, 
it's just ridiculous at this point. Darnell Crossland, the attorney for both families, tells Inside Edition Digital. Presumptively, they have body cams and, and right. they tap the body cam. And so um, that, that has not been released. Crossland says Brenda Lee Rawls' case is strikingly similar. All the experts that looked at this case says that you treat these cases like a homicide and you dial them backwards as need be. But that's not what happened in these two cases. Yeah, they didn't go to the gentleman's house that she was found at. Um, they didn't try to trace anything to see if there's anything nefarious that happened. They just wrote it off like an accident and and didn't notify anybody. Tell me about what has been going on when it comes to the evidence, the 911 calls in the Brenda Lee Rawls case and the Lauren Smithfield's case. What have the families gotten so far? So sure. So since I became chief in December, December 1st of 2022, I've reached out to each each of those families and I've been in contact with each of those families. And thus far, uh, the only family that um, has come in was the Rawls family. And uh, I gave them some documentation, some police reports and things of that nature. Um, the Smith family, we were in contact, but we've not yet secured a time for them to come in. They wanted to speak with their lawyer and uh, they have gotten back to me as of this point. Why did it take so long or why is it taking so long for these families to collect the belongings of their loved ones and to get 911 recordings and police reports and all of the things that many other cases and the loved ones of victims get within hours and days of the initial incident? So um, I can't speak to all of that. I can speak to the time that I've been here, but I can say to you, I'm not sure what belongings that they have not been given. Um, I do believe there were some belongings that were that were returned. Um, as I read the reports, I do see um, some notations that, that there were some belongings that were returned. So I'm not sure what outstanding belongings there are. One small victory came for the Rawls and Field families in the spring of 2022, when local lawmakers voted unanimously to require police to notify the families of deceased relatives within 24 hours. But a recent Hearst Media Connecticut investigation turned out that the city of Bridgeport has a backlog of more than 2,000 Freedom of Information Act records requests. The law commonly referred to as FOIA is how the public, including journalists, can access certain records on public officials, including police body cam footage, in order to hold tax-funded government entities accountable. Connecticut Insider reports that despite Bridgeport Mayor Joseph Gannam's promise for transparency, he and his administration have done little, if anything, to address the years-long backlog. The head administrator just came out now and said that in order to make FOIA requests um, more effective, they're going to have the departments that that the request is going to answer their own FOIA because there was a bottleneck. So they're saying instead of doing that, they'll just have the fire department answer their own FOIA requests. The police answer their own. Board of Education answer their own. And I know that Mayor Ganim has come out and said they want to streamline the process. That's something you just referred to. Mm -hmm. So when is that happening? Is that now? Is there a set date? Has it already happened? So in terms of uh, these two cases, we've begun the process of reaching out to give information um, as it relates to the FOIA process. I'm not sure everything that they're looking for, but we have made overtures to have them come in and give out information. He turned down a request to appear on camera, but through his spokesperson, Mayor Ganim tells Inside Edition Digital that FOIA training in Bridgeport began during the second week of March 2023. When asked about the previous police chief who oversaw the investigation before Chief Porter took it over, Mayor Ganim said it was a personnel matter. When asked whether his office could send over any police body cam footage, 911 call tapes, or transcripts, he told me to file a FOIA request. Chief Porter told Inside Edition Digital their investigation turned up no evidence of foul play in Brenda Lee Rawls' death. If it was so well done, then why the hesitation from the Bridgeport Police Department? And, you know, I had reached out to the police department back then. Mm -hmm. I reached out to the mayor back then and no one would say anything. If it was done on the up and up, then why not just come out and say, hey, this was done and, and avoid the speculation and avoid the frustration from the families? No, I mean, I think there were some things that we could have done better. I mean, there's definitely mm -hmm. were things that could have done, that should have done better. Our communication to the family definitely could have done, been done a, a whole lot better. And, um, you know, so we're trying to improve upon that. Um, and uh, we're trying to be transparent. Um, you know, 
I arranged to, or tried to make arrangements to meet, meet with each family prior to being contacted by you for any interviews or anything like that. The sentiment in this, across both cases, is that, you know, had these two women been of a different race, we wouldn't even be having this conversation, right? The thought is that when it comes to these types of cases, Black women are constantly just shoved aside. You know, we don't get as much attention or care as maybe some women of other races. What mm -hmm. do you have to say to that? No, I, I would say sadly, uh, you know, in many respects, sometimes that is true. Um, you know, sometimes it's perception, sometimes it is reality. Um, but not just black women, but, you know, black people in general. Um, but, um, you know, that's a sad commentary on where we are. But uh, I can say that's something that I would not tolerate, something that I don't condone, something that we are, are really trying to make sure it doesn't occur again. Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont has not responded to Inside Edition Digital's multiple requests for comment. The Fields family intends on bringing a $30 million lawsuit against the city of Bridgeport. Once you get this information, after all this fighting yields whatever it yields, what's next? Well, for me, the officers that was there at my daughter's apartment, I want them, I want them to be held accountable for how they act. Um, my plan to move forward is to concentrate on helping others. And in January 9th, I opened my private practice. I'm a, nurse, I'm a psychiatric mental nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. My plan is to throw myself into helping others who suffer from mental illness. My private practice is called My Sister's Keeper, and it's dedicated to my sister, Brenda. Hopefully in efforts not to remember them by the way they died, but instead to hold Lauren Smithfield and Brenda Lee Rawls' memories by the way they lived and as their families described them as joyous individuals. For Inside Edition Digital, I'm Stephanie Officer.